We are back for the Tennessee Volunteers Dynasty mode. It is time for the offseason. And before we get into all the moves being made in the offseason, let's take a look at our stats from our 2022 Volunteers squad. Of course, Arch Manning might have been the best quarterback in all of college football. I know he had some struggles with the interceptions, but still 4,470 yards passing at 37 touchdowns, 24 interceptions. Joe Milton, of course, rode the bench, but he had an okay year for the time that he did play. Tyon Evans exactly hit the 1,000 yard mark, 15 touchdowns for him. Arch Manning ran for some yards as well. Jabari Small didn't have that big of an impact this season, but next year it's going to be all him, of course, with Evans leaving. For receiving yards, our leading receiver, of course, was Jalen Hyatt, 1,110 receiving yards with six touchdowns, but Jimmy Callaway had a great season, 900 eight yards Keen with 900 at Tillman 795 Evans the Nixon small Merrill Warren Jackson Kobe and then Campbell rounding out our receiving leaders as for our blocking honestly our O-line did pretty well this season except for Harris I mean that man did not have a good year at all He's a senior and he's going to be leaving, obviously, but we had a pretty solid year out of our line. I really respect what those guys did for us this season. As for defense, Aaron Beasley had a tremendous senior season and same can be said about Jalen McAuliffe. It's really going to suck that we're going to lose those two guys next season, but they had great last years with the squad. Same with Jeremy Banks, Brandon Turnage, Warren Burrell. All those guys will be graduating, of course. Just big contributions out of those guys. Elijah Simmons will be back next season, hopefully, but he had 16 sacks for the team in his junior season. Incredible we got out of him, alongside his other defensive tackle, of course, in Omari Thomas, who's only a sophomore. Both those guys are going to be back next season. They might be the two best defensive tackles in all of football. Our front line should be dominant next year here with Tennessee. Really excited for them to come back. Of course, Turnage led the team in picks along with Danico Slaughter. Both those guys are juniors. I might have said Turnage was a senior earlier, but no, he'll be back next season hopefully he doesn't go for the draft him and slaughter both and yeah that'll do it for the defensive stats for the most part of course nico slaughter again our strong safety and branders probably best corner james norton went perfect this year no Connor mcgrath numbers this man was perfect for field goals he was perfect for pats my goodness i wasn't expecting that and also jalen hyatt was a very good returner for us one returner of the year of course we won the capital one at citrus bowl whatever you want to call it going 12 and 2 last season starting a run at tennessee 23 and 4 as for some coaching changes my goodness mel tucker's going to alabama saving retires so tucker's the replacement they get jay johnson to fill his spot at michigan state west virginia takes san jose state's coach cal is going to take tulane's guy uh, South Carolina is going to go to UNLV's guy. Uh, okay, Minnesota fired Bill O'Brien after one year. Interesting. James Franklin from Texas State's going to Washington State. Bill O'Brien's going to Boston College. <laughs> okay. Sure, he got fired from Minnesota. Now he's going to go coach the Eagles over at Boston College. Mike Leach got fired. So Mississippi State gets a new coach. Uh, we're gonna lose oh, we're gonna lose our offensive coordinator which makes sense because I mean we had a tremendous year last season throwing the football and just our offense in general so Alex is gonna head on over to Maryland he is their new head coach I mean I would take it too of course our offense coordinator going from Tennessee over to Maryland a team that was three and nine last season we will see who our replacement is at offensive coordinator in just a few seconds a lot of coaching changes this year and here you go going into the coordinators who is our new offensive coordinator? It will be Justin Fuente from Virginia Tech. Their former head coach is now our offensive coordinator. You could have done a lot worse. He got fired from V-Tech, but we'll take it. He can make a good old coordinator. I'll take that every day of the week. Of course, our philosophy doesn't change. We're going to throw the ball. We're going to air it out every single damn play. We don't give a damn. Okay, players leaving. Jalen Hyatt's going to the draft. As a junior, you're really going to try to go out and try to be drafted in the sixth round. Jalen McAuliffe is supposed to be a fourth round pick. Darnell Wright should be a fifth round pick. Joe Milton's gonna get drafted in the fifth round. No USFL for him. The USFL and sale will be calling Tyon Evans and Warren Burrell and Aaron Beasley, really? Uh, okay, Cedric Tillman will be heading in the USFL, but my goodness, Jalen Hyatt wants to go out for the draft. Persuasion chance, very high. Yeah, we have a lot to guarantee this man. Could go first round pick. I have an easy one though. Guarantee a conference championship. I mean, it's really national championship or bust, but we really think we can win the SEC this season. And Jalen Hyatt says, I'll come back to the team. Also, Marcus Goddard wants to go transfer to Vandy. He didn't play at all last season because we have a lot of receivers. Okay, I tried to persuade him. He's going to Vanderbilt. Have fun winning absolutely maybe one game. I mean, have fun, bro. 
So we will see the draft results. So Jalen McCall gets picked in the fourth round. Joe Milton gets picked in the fifth. And Darnell Wright is going to be picked in the fifth round. Big congrats to all those guys, of course, now heading to the NFL. On to the offseason recruiting. I don't got much. I think these are the four guys we want. Dustin Murphy, Scott Hart, Larry Crosby, Kyle Patrick. We've already gotten all the guys that we wanted in the first place through the recruiting classes. So if we can get those guys, I'm happy. We'll see. And okay, Dustin Murphy goes to AM. We could have got a quarterback in Quincy Chavez, but we already got Victor Rivers to commit to the team. We lost Samuel Adams, not the beer guy, but actually Samuel Adams is a real like US history guy. I, I don't I didn't pay attention to history class, but I think Samuel Adams is a big deal. Boston, I think. I don't know. He's gonna go to Alabama. Um, but we lose Dustin Murphy, we get Larry Crosby, we get Kyle Patrick. Cool by me, we get Scott Hart, we get a kicker now, and Tom Williams. We'll see if he's gonna be the starter. It's either gonna be him or James Norton. I might redshirt Williams, so then we can have a guy after Norton is done playing. We're gonna get Clifton Dudley as well, a guard. We didn't get Jason Reese, he goes to Colorado State. I don't give a damn. We go to position changes. I'm not gonna make too many changes. The big one though is gonna be Tamarion McDonald. I'm gonna send him from safety all the way down the middle linebacker just because we need middle linebackers. And you look at the strong safety position, we've got Danico Slaughter and we've got Tate. We've got Carey there as well. We've got guys that are gonna be ahead on the depth chart over McDonald. So I like him playing at middle linebacker, giving him a shot to actually play. As for the athletes, Leonard Brown's gonna be playing receiver. Kevin Collier is a 78 overall. We got him away from Michigan. They're saying he's a good free safety, 82 overall. I'll take that every day of the week. Tremaine Anderson, we just got the last second. He'll go play running back. Melvin Andrews from Salmon, Indiana. Actually, that's Idaho, not Indiana. Um, we're gonna have him play, I think, in the secondary. He's gonna play corner. And then Vinny, he's a Juco guy. We need linemen, so he's gonna go play left guard for the squad. Happy with that. Training, oh my goodness, Jalen Hyatt's gonna be nasty. That's what I've gotten out the training results. Arch Manning's a 97 overall, and he's only a sophomore. Nuts. Jabari Smalls a 97 overall. He's going into his senior year. Harrison Bailey's a 91 and he's only a junior. I'm very surprised he hasn't transferred out yet. I'll be damned if he doesn't transfer after next season just because it'll be like a 94 as a senior wing to play. It'll be a Joe Milton situation. He's not going to play. It's Arch Manning's squad. And Victor Rivers is coming up as well. But Jabari Small, 97 overall. Watch out for Jimmy Holiday. Like, I think we need to get this guy involved. 96 speed at Jimmy Holiday. He doesn't play because we've got Jared Malloy now coming back after redshirting last season. We've got Beckwith. We've got Wright as well. Our running back room is so loaded, man. We haven't even seen Jared Malloy yet. We haven't seen Holiday yet. We really haven't seen any of Wright and Beckwith. We've only seen Jabari Small. But that was only a limited amount because we saw a lot of Tyon Evans. Our running back room is going to be crazy. But Jabari Small leads it as a 90 seven overall senior excited for him Andrew Richardson of course our fullback the receiving core man Jalen Hyatt Jimmy Callaway Walker Merrill though is just kind of mid if I'm being if I'm being real I mean was he an 85 same with Addis Anderson Kobe I believe his name is both those guys are just kind of mid Sullivan's all right I'm really I like Ron Jackson though Ron Jackson's gonna be a sophomore next season 81 overall 95 speed he didn't get to play a lot last season, but I think Ron Jackson might slide into that third receiver type role. At tight end, we've got three very good tight ends and Julian Nixon, we've got Campbell, Miles Campbell, and we've got Julius Sullivan as well. Campbell and Sullivan, both registered sophomores, Nixon going into his junior season. At line, we've got a lot of solid guys, Dane Davis, we've got Jackson Lampley, we've got Cooper Mays still around, Lonnie Cobbs being the backup. I might even redshirt him so we just get more years of eligibility with him. He's a beast, 87 overall at center, but of course, playing behind Cooper Mays, who's a senior, so so Cobb really won't play. So I think that's why we're going to redshirt him. We've got uh, Spragans. We've got Will Parker at right tackle at left end. Mohan and Bailey both there. And they're both redshirt juniors. Insane the amount of depth we have at right end. You got Barron and Harrison. Barron's a senior. Harrison's a redshirt senior. They're both going into their senior years next season. I mean, Barron's going to play, but we'll see. At D tackle, nuts. Best defensive tackle room in all of college football, of course, with Simmons, Thomas, and Terry. I left outside linebacker, Willison Whitehead. No linebacker. Our user this season is going to be Morvin Joseph. Be on the lookout for that. We've got McDonald there now and our Uber prospect and Serge Johnson playing middle linebacker as well. Excited for him and seeing his progression this season. Uh, Garland is going to be our outside linebacker at corner. Brandon Turnage, need a huge year out of him. we got three seniors in Turnage, Hayden, and 
and Fields. And then of course, Rucker being our redshirt sophomore. At free safety, we've got Marley, you got Charles as well, Christian Charles being the backup at strong safety, Janico Slaughter, John Carey. It is going to be Slaughter's team with Carey being in there as well. James Norton's gonna be our kicker, of course, and then Dion Irvin is going to be our punter. Red shirts, I think this is pretty simple. Victor Rivers is gonna get the red shirt just because, again, we're trying to save his eligibility because he will be next in line after Arch Manning does leave. At running back, I think Tremaine Anderson can get the red shirt. Pretty obvious one right there. We need Andrew Richardson, can't redshirt him. At receiver, I'm not gonna redshirt, of course, Hyatt or Merrill. Rotten Jackson, I think, is going to play this season. Leonard Brown and Terrence Edwards, I don't think those guys are going to play this year. Just look at the guys we have. I don't think there's a spot for them right now on the team that can make an immediate impact, so they're going to redshirt them this season. Crosby's going to get redshirted. Um, I think Clifton Dudley is going to get redshirted as well. Yeah, the controversial one here is Lonnie Cobb. I'm going to redshirt him again just because I see a lot out that guy, and I think he's got a lot of potential. And as an 87 overall, as a sophomore, he can be very good in a couple years. So if we just save his eligibility, because he's not going to play this year anyway, so you might as well redshirt the man. I'm cool with it. Um, Spragans, of course, not going to get redshirted. Look at left tackle. Don't have any guys who have any eligibility left at the redshirt spot. Uh, Craig Thomas is going to get redshirted. Right end, of course, we can't redshirt Baron. D tackles, Hackett and Patrick. Probably don't want to redshirt both of them because I don't want to get stuck with only three D tackles. You probably want to have four. So it's just going to be one of these guys are going to end up getting redshirted. It's going to be Curtis Hackett. Okay. Left outside linebacker, no red shirts. Middle linebacker, no red shirts. Right outside linebacker, Clay Parker can make an impact this season, so he ain't gonna get red shirted. Hart and Nelson, the new freshman coming in, are gonna get red shirted this year. Kevin Collier probably will get red shirted, even though he's an 82 overall. Yeah, he needs to get red shirted though for the future of this team. Phil Tate, more of the same. He can make an impact, but I think he should get red shirted just so we have a better future with the squad. And then a kicker, Tom Williams. I think highly of this guy, but just push him down the road a little bit. He'll get red shirted as well. Quick depth chart look here. Manning, of course, leading the quarterback room at running back small, right back with Malloy. That's not even showing you holiday. We're stacked at running back, I'm telling you. At receiver, Hyatt, Callaway. And they've got Merrill, then Campbell, and then Kobe. Nah, we're going to do this. we got Jalen Hyatt, of course, being our starting receiver. He's going to be number one. Callaway's going to be on the field at all times as well. Those two guys are going to be the one-two punch. It gets tricky after that because I'm not sold on Walker Merrill. I'm just really not. He doesn't have the speed. He's just kind of a possession receiver who's just, just mid. He's okay. I'm going to make Ron Jackson the third receiver. I want to see Ron Jackson a lot in the slot this season. He's got, what, 95 speed, the second most speed on basically this entire team. You put that guy in open field, he's going to be tough to catch. So he's going to start the season as the number three receiver. It will go Hyatt, Callaway, Jackson, Kobe, Merrill, and then Ronald Sullivan it being the sixth man as well. A lot of these guys are going to see playing time, but just that's how I see this team going to start off with this 2023 season. Again, Hyatt, Callaway, and Jackson should be on the field a lot. With Jalen Hyatt having that 99 speed, it's going to be nasty at tight end. Nixon Campbell being the one-two over there. The O-line is basically the same as you remember it from the training results. Cooper May is going to be the best lineman we have on this team, I do believe. At the center position, Parker, of course, the right tackle. He's only a sophomore. Should be a monster. At left end, going to start Mohan over Bailey. I just think he's a little bit better. He's got 80 speed. Bailey's got 59, of course, trying to keep the outside. Keep outside contained and remain on the edge. That's why we're going to have him. Tyler Barron, of course, at right end. D-tackle, Thomas Simmons, Terry. Oh, it's going to be nasty. At left outside linebacker, Aaron Willis. Um, yeah, I think we're up Simmons here, yeah. Um, Aaron Willis is going to be nasty. We've got Lenneth Whitehead as well right behind him. Former running back, he should be gross. Joseph's going to be the user this season. He'll go into his senior year. True senior. Garland, of course, is our right outside linebacker. At corner, the one, two, three punch. All seniors. Of course, you're talking about Fields, Turnage, and Hayden should be nice. Marley's going to be our strong safety. Our free safety to Nico Slaughter is going to be our strong safety. And then a kicker, not going to be Deion, Deion Irvin. It will be our guy in James Norton. Here's our schedule. Made it tough for a reason. My goodness. We start the season, neutral site, Georgia Dome, us and NC State. Cool. Then we got Ole Miss, SEC Championship rematch. Ugh, I don't know if I like that. Then after that, we will have a game against Arkansas, the number two Florida. We'll go to Boise State just for the blue field. Georgia at number seven right now. South Carolina to Bama. Missouri, we will host USC, Vandy, and then Kentucky to round out the schedule. It is the toughest possible schedule pretty much that you can make in college football right now, and we've got it. Folks, this starts our 2023 run to the national championship with the Tennessee Volunteers. Let's go and get it.
be on the lookout for this 2023 season. Thank y'all for watching, folks. Make sure that subscribe button down below for more. Make sure you leave a like if you did enjoy the video and are excited for 2023. Oh, quick voice crack. Thank y'all for watching, though. And Mappa, forever.